Good morning everyone, it's Tim Gaiash once again, and today I want to talk about fluoride and all of the craziness that I'm hearing and seeing across the web and in natural health circles about how bad fluoride is. Yes, fluoride is bad when it comes to the type of fluoride that is being used and uh, overdoses of fluoride, getting too much of it. Um, but there is organic, or sorry, inorganic natural fluoride that our bodies need, which is not being covered by these, uh, these abuses or overdoses of fluoride. And I'm seeing so many people that need it. Once you hear and read or see the indications of a calcium fluoride deficiency, which I'm, this is written about fluoride in general, but I'm speaking today mainly of calcium fluoride deficiencies. Uh, but we're going to go on here in a minute. We're going to head into what parts of our body need fluoride, calcium fluoride in specific. It is so important to our bodies, and it scares me to death to see all of these people who are depriving their children of needed fluoride when it's almost impossible, unless they're going to cook their own foods, grow their own foods. It's literally nearly impossible. But let's move on anyway, and we'll go into the body uses of sorry, calcium fluoride. Our skin, hair, tendons, and I'm going to jump down, bones and dental glaze all require calcium fluoride in order to be healthy or maintain health. But most importantly, our tendons, connective tissue, and joints also require calcium fluoride. And this is where calcium fluoride becomes so very important to the human body. It's responsible for the elasticity of tissue of the tissues of, within the body and to prevent fibrosis. Depriving your children and yourselves of real fluoride because of bad press on bad fluoride and overdoses is completely irresponsible and is going to be detrimental to your health. Please consider and do your research on fluoride and how much your body truly needs it. Now this is a big list today on the indications of a calcium fluoride deficiency, but this is very intentional because there are so many indications uh, and really important indications of a calcium fluoride deficiency. But let me run down the list. Uh, deficiency in calcium fluoride, progesterone and estrogen imbalances. It would be a progesterone lack or an estrogen lack or um, Dominance, either either one. Enlarged adenoids, duodenal ulcers, hardening of the arteries or arterial sclerosis, emphysema, immune deficiencies, tendinitis, miscarriages, peptic ulcers, uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome or disease, spinal disc herniations, goiters for those of you with thyroid issues, intestinal and colonic polyps. Plus, there's an additional 164 more known indications that I can't list here because we'd have to make a 40 or, or an hour long video and I just want to keep you interested enough that you do your own research. But let's move on now to facial analysis. And they will be a brown or black coloring around the eyes. Uh, this can be the upper eyelid when you're talking a, a dark brown an almost black coloring on the upper eyelid that's actually something different but we're not going to get into that that's ca calcium phos phosphate and I'm talking about calcium fluoride here which I should have indicated a little better in the the title of this uh, little page here but anyway uh, a brown or black uh, coloring around the eyes burst capillaries or veins cracked dry lips and the most prominent is the diversified folds below the eyes called cubicle folds that run from the inside corner of the eyes and swoop down along and follow the path of the, the lower eyelid. Periodontitis, of course, scaly skin in the face, oily skin, cracked skin at the corners of the mouth, and dry cracked fingers and hands. 
Today I've done something different in that I've downloaded a couple of pictures of celebrities to show you real life examples of people with a calcium fluoride deficiency so that you can see what it looks like in the face as well. Now this is supposed to be a celebrity uh, with no makeup. I have no idea who she is because I'm not a big TV watcher. But if you look at the inside corner of her eyelids and you look at the uh, line that follows down and follows the bottom of her eyes, there's a fold there. That is a cubicle fold and that's an indication of her calcium phosphate, sorry, calcium fluoride deficiency. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you can see it in this photo or not, but I can. She has the cracked dry corners of the of the mouth and she also has the oily skin or shiny skin. Here's yet another gal. Uh, I guess she's a TV personality. I have no idea who she is. But if you look, you can really see the darkness around her skin. Uh, it's hard to see if there's any cracks in the corners of her mouth. But you see the oily skin that goes along with it. And you can see the cubicle fold that runs from the inside corner of her eyelids and downward. Uh, another gal with a calcium fluoride deficiency. Uh, she might think she's healthy, but she's truly not. And here's one that it's I have no choice but to actually know who she is. And I'm sure that you folks do as well. Uh, but if you look, once again, you can see from starting at the inside corner of her eye, there is a line that swoops down. That is the cubicle fold. And that, once again, is an indication of a calcium fluoride deficiency. She has the darkness around her eyes. Uh, if you can see closer, you would see that there are cracks in the inside corner of her lips and the shiny skin. Just three real world examples of calcium fluoride deficiency so that you can see them in yourselves, your family, your friends, and be able to help identify a possible future or current issue. Uh, anyway, that's all for today, folks. We'll see you next time. Be careful when it comes to your calcium fluoride. Do your research. Check for yourself. Think that I'm an idiot. That's what I want you to do. Get your research done. See you next time. Bye-bye.